Hey guys, what's up? It's DJ Unprotected. So I wanted to do a video this time about uh, adding reverb to your tracks. And this is a little tip for working within reason. But as always, these steps can be applied to any DAW that you're working with. So here's a song that I've been working on, just the drums and percussion. Um, it's dry, and then we're going to go over adding effects to it. So check this out. Okay, so as you could probably hear so far, it sounds relatively dry. And so what we need to do is add effects. So what I like to do is always start with the combinator. And I'll take that combinator and connect, you know, the FX send and then the return. So that way I can add things within this. So the first thing we're going to add is a plate. It's a good starting point for the drums. And so I'm just going to add a R7000, RV7000 advanced reverb. Really good. And I'm going to load a patch. This uh, all first plate is a good starting point. And so I'm always going to start, you know, the snare or, or a clap. In this case, I'm going to use this clap. And here's a trick for setting up a reverb. What I like to do, remember where your level is at for your clap. And, um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to turn this on pre-fader, meaning the, sig all, the whole signal is going to go to that effect. And we're going to turn that effect on, and we're going to boost it all the way up. Now we're going to turn the clap down. And what this is going to allow us to do is to hear exactly what the effect is doing to that sound. So you know what you're adding to it, basically. So as you can tell, that's obviously a little drastic. So what I'm going to do is uh, change some of the parameters within this preset. Uh, first, pre-delay, 31 milliseconds is probably a little too long. That's the amount of time between the signal and then the reverb effect. I am usually start around 15 to 20 and work my way up from there. Decay is a little bit long, so I'm going to pull this down. Low frequency damp, probably going to pull this up to 300 or so. And let's see what this sounds like. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just kind of going through parameters. I want the snare to have presence, but I don't want it to be overwhelming with the reverb effect. You know, a plate is supposed to be kind of quick and short. And in this case, I wanted to add some more sharpness to the snare sound, which I'm going to apply to the other drums as well. So we know how drastic... So we know how drastic this is sounding so far. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take off the pre. We're going to add the original snare sound and then tone back its level of the send so that we can, you know, make it more tonable to the music. Check it out. Okay, so we can hear uh, what it's doing to the sound. I'm going to add a little bit more pre-delay, maybe 24 seconds. Add a little bit more decay to it. Let's see how this sounds.
So it's not overly done. It just adds a little bit to it. And this is a good starting point for a plate effect. Uh, I could mute, I'll play it to you with and without. Here, so here's without. And here's with. Okay, so so far we're just starting the beginning of adding space to the mix and our percussion elements. And that is just a plate. Now we're going to add a small room too because we want those drums to have a little more space when they're playing. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add an RV7000 reverb. And I'm going to load, actually, it's going to be normal. And we're just going to choose, let's see, room. Edit some of the parameters here. Pre-delay again. Start around, you know, 10 to 20. Bring the early reflection down to about 40%. Gonna do the same thing again. Gonna put it on pre delay. Solo the clap. Pull it down. Turn off the plate. And we're gonna see what this sounds like. I think that sounds good about now and so let's bring this up turn it off pre And so we'll add in some of the other elements and see how this sounds. Now after I add all the other elements in, you listen to how it sounds to everything and you may need to pull it back a little bit. Remember, less is best, you don't want to overdo it. We're just adding that space within the mix so that the instruments aren't clouding over each other. Okay, so far I like I like where this is heading. And now I want a little bit more space. So what I can kind of hear so far with this small room is that around, you know, uh, four or 500 hertz, it seems to be like a little bit of a buildup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a post EQ to this effect. As always, you know, you always add the low cut parameter frequency around four to five hundred and I'm gonna bring it down about six db and bring it kinda wide and that just helps clear out any possible muddiness or you know a honky tonk type sound and I, I just like to avoid that when I'm dealing with rooms Okay, so we're going to add just a little bit more space to this mix. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add our V7000 Advanced Reverb. And we're going to open up Medium Hall Patch. Same thing. Now it's a good starting point to load the preset. But 
we're going to go in and change some things. Again, around 15 to 20 is a good starting point for your pre-delay. Early reflections to late, I'm going to go around 35 to 40%. All right, we're going to do the same thing again with the clap. And so we want this to be really kind of distant. Okay, so if you look at the EQ within the RV7000 itself, the preset kind of boosted uh, here around 1.4 uh, kilohertz. I'm going to pull that down because that tends to be a region, whether your leads or your percussion elements can be strong in that area. So until I get into mixing after I've completed all the arrangement, so I'm going to take this down. I don't want that to gain at all. And because we're going into such a large hall, you can either uh, take down within the RV7000 itself around 250 hertz. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you why, because that can, that can compete with lower frequencies in your bass or your kicks. And so I'll boost it back up and you can kind of hear the difference. It can get real muddy in that low end. Okay, so that's a good start. Now, you know, we're going to bring it back up. Turn off the pre. So it just adds a little more distance and space to that clap. And so then we'll add the other elements here. And then, you know, you can always go in and tweak things. You can add compression. Since I have a lot of elements coming through this plate, I could add a compression afterwards. And you know, it's good to sometimes throw the compression on compression on after um, an effect because it stops if there's a lot of signals going through to maintain that. And because a plate is usually add on a lot of components within the track, I usually like to just add something. And even if you don't see uh, any signal activity, it is still affecting it. Okay, so once you've added that to all of your tracks, then uh, let's see what it sounds like in context with the whole mix as you're adding your elements. OK, 
Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'm working on completing an EP in the next few months. So each week as I'm developing my tracks, I'm going to post tips and tricks of as I'm working on these projects. So please subscribe so that way you can stay up to date with these videos. And I look forward to posting these as well as my EP coming out in a few months. So hope you enjoy. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up. Would love to talk about music.